Hi guys, Eric here again, the guy with the point cloud, software workflows, uh, accessory events, so. And we have the March uh, 24 and it's close to Eastern. And before I like to start with my uh, uh, show, uh, we need some Eastern accessories, I would say it's so as a technical guy. So we have here, ah, I have a very good present. So for Eastern, I can put these orders here inside, so it looks very good. And finally, yeah, I need also uh, some Eastern accessory for me and uh, now I'm ready for the Eastern show. So let me start, but before I start, I think I will take this off because I think it's uh, maybe too confusing for me and for you, maybe more. So uh, the uh, accessories go down. So and then straight away we start with uh, hardware stuff and uh, this uh, time we have something from the uh, slam market and there is from the com producer stonex what i didn't really already was an italian company but now i think it's a chinese company regarding to some bigger companies together with hemisphere i don't know it's you know italian china or china italian by the way they announced a new scanner x70 go uh, I, if somebody knows if they know uh, Italian or Chinese, uh, drop this here uh, as a comment, uh, would be helpful. Uh, they uh, announced this X70 Ghost scanner, and this is the next hybrid scanner. It's a new area of hybrid scanning, I think. They saw the idea from Faro, from this system, where it's also hybrid, and they integrated the same idea technology in their small product here. And it is different, it has a smaller laser have an internal camera I think you can also put additional I think there was some gallery pictures like a I don't know is this a GPS here or a Pano cam uh, you can do a little bit more insight here there's also a video and they have other systems but we like to stay in this system call them 70 meter range and minimum range is 10 centimeters and a class one laser and they give us here something like the it's six millimeters but they say it's environment dependent as i don't know it's i don't believe we can have six millimeters there should be very good surfaces to have six millimeter with these uh, very small sensors what they're using in their application here but it's new and have also the hybrid workflow there's also here a video where you can see how it works so yeah it's a new product uh, if somebody say it looks a little bit similar to the FJD's FJ Dynamics scanner. I think they have a pretty similar uh, look. I don't know, uh, maybe somebody knows more if this is this OEM version of the same manufacturers. Please let me know if you know more about it. So then we go to another Chinese company, uh, CNAV, uh, and they show an integration of a LiDAR scanner and together with an RTK module, with integrated camera and say they have an, like an RTK real-time or it's not a real-time but they have an RTK interface a very accurate RTK in the scanner and with this system you should be able to go outside and make indoor and outdoor scans seamless with their technology and they say they will have a precision of uh, five uh, five centimeters uh, with good satellite signal for the measurement also something new for outside a measurement but inside too uh, but I don't see any uh, information yet from them here so ah here we have a uh, video here at the shows they have an uh, we have to uh, shut down the music um, yeah and uh, you see there's a GPS signal is a uh, returning uh, slam scanner range up 120 and it was a little bit too fast so uh, I don't know, uh, 10 millimeter, better 10 millimeter accuracy. I think it's maybe also in his size system what they're using. And you should be able then to uh, uh, working there and then have an own uh, software. And yeah, they see here they have one centimeter relative accuracy. But if I see this point out here, I don't believe that everything it's you know one centimeter is the system accuracy but if you have a whole area this will be bigger but you see there is more and more uh, uh, yeah um, application coming and they have this also integrated now with a uh, very precise GPS system that's quite new they say you can go outside and go inside and have the coordinates from outside inside I don't know it doesn't make so many sense so because usually the coordinate system for if you do like buildings uh, mostly you use an uh, internal coordinate system like from the building and not a global coordinate system but it's this new development i don't have any practical experience with the system it's uh, interesting it's new and then we come to the next company is this company 
and uh, they uh, have a similar application. I have to go back to the home button here. So well, maybe I have to reload this website. Um, it's log.ai. I think it's American producer and there combined a high precise GPS system. You see it there together with cameras. Uh, and I think they are making photogrammetry uh, a solution uh, on, on this and then have RTK position. Uh, that's what they are doing. You see uh, outside it is another technology. I think with photogrammetry, you not will achieve the same good results like with uh, um, like uh, if you have a laser, but uh, coloring information looks uh, also good. You see there, it's an option to uh, use both technology together as something new, uh, but uh, all of them have advantage and disadvantage. Like uh, on some points as photogrammetry, maybe deliver your sharper details, but on the longer range, you will be having a little bit disadvantage. So and then uh, that's my uh, feeling. So then the other one, we go now in the air. We have these Australian firma Carbonics and they're integrated on their biggest or one of their newest drone flagship which have six meter uh, wide uh, wings. Um, uh, and Regal Mini Vux, nee, Regal Vux 120 lighter together with the Phase 1 XM100. A medium format camera in this uh, Carbonics Otano fixes wings VTOL aircraft long name, also they are integrated all these systems and uh, they are able with this big system to go, uh, also generate uh, point cloud and high resolution color uh, images and I think they tell the long thing that they can go like 12,000 hectares or on a distance from 400 kilometers in one uh, section. Also that would be definitely something what is maybe super interesting for the uh, like Australian, African and American market where you have these large areas. So maybe not so super interesting for German market. And the same idea or the same tech, not technology, I would not say, but uh, the Wingtra, it's uh, also a wing system, as a, like the same category. <clears throat> they announced that they are now uh, integrated in their wing system, also in Hesai LiDAR and an additional camera, and also now able to also use this LiDAR in their wing copter, what we see here, and also capture large areas. So, and I think it's definitely also interesting for the international market, uh, like for international cus customer for maybe depends from your drone regulation. We are here in Central Europe, we have a very strong drone regulation. <clears throat> if you have such big wing systems, I think usually you're not allowed to fly because there is strict regulation. You can only fly by uh, see them and uh, then it makes no sense to have an extreme range if you need your eye contact to the drone. So, but for international market, a super interesting development. And then we go bigger in the air to the airplane stuff, like uh, also announced the update to their uh, on a new system, like a Tyrannia Bus V. And they have now a um, new scan pattern, circle scan pattern, ellipse scan pattern, and skew ellipse scan pattern as a different pattern to capture different areas, um, getting better return signals from side points or under the trees. So that is their update if you are in from the airborne guys. And then it's something this I find interesting, but I have to switch now to an international web page. The German company Siemens and NVIDIA expand a collaboration uh, of the uh, AI stuff uh, for immersive real, real time visualization. And this is uh, Siemens used this NVIDIA Omniverse, what was already launched in 24, and they use it in their Team Center X platform. And uh, they are now able to present large data set in one. And to show this to you, I think it's better as talking. Uh, there is a video here on their website. And I show this uh, like here. You have big, very big data sets. And, um, uh, and they can now, uh, with NVIDIA, they can present all these CAT data, the massive CAT files in once. And they show it here on a... a, a a technology as on the project from them with the omniverse technology so and um, this is working the user notes this uh, Siemens product and then the uses USD database and here they have an example that they have a large ship like an um, LNG and there is a uh, it's not an LNG but it's an, a gas tanker and they can now show the whole data set in this one uh, team platform to share it with different engineers, non-engineers, uh, to get a better overview over the project. 
And now these people have uh, now the option and then they can put additional information inside. As you have the database, but now you get a photorealistic uh, view from that and you can see, you can see this large data of a whole ship in, in one uh, viewer at uh, the same time to many people. I think that's is, if somebody from you working with such data, they know how big they are and they have really options to make here very detailed engineering work and show it. I think it's an interesting uh, application and shows where the market uh, goes in the future. And the same technology is now also used by Trimble SketchUp. They have also the NVIDIA collaboration to improve this open USD workflow. And uh, here they tell us is over 300 million terabytes are created as data in 3D. And uh, yeah, you should be able to use them. Also they, they have this platform that you can use this 3D data between the different softwares come originally from Pixar company. And for what they're using this is for digital trains and industry digitalization for 3D geospatial and BIM, and then for an AI and machine learning process, and also to use these point cloud um, in SketchUp. And then uh, you can use it now these in this Tumor SketchUp, um, but you, uh, as they can now uh, operate this UPNUSD and this NVIDIA RDX technology in there. Uh, system and uh, also able to um, um, present this to their customer clients. So, and finally, for you, I have a uh, next uh, information, and this come uh, here from my website. It's from a German company. I'm uh, happy to tell something about the German company. And here we have the release news. The company is Scantra uh, from the com German company Technic. Product is Scantra is an uh, yeah, it's an adjustment software so for, for point out registration, point out adjustments. Uh, I often or I sometimes report about it and they have improvement of their uh, Scantra uh, platform, but they also bring something new and that's they call them Scantra Kinematic. And this is very new. They are presenters from the, on the Oldenburg 3D days. And uh, this include now uh, that you can use uh, um, kin kinematic scans from kinematic systems like this Orbis or other systems and uh, total station and static scans all in one and or that's every single but all in one also together and make uh, their uh, um, adjustment over the trajectory. What you need is that you work, you need a kinematic point cloud with timestamps and you need this trajectory file and what already they got is dot product, MS and Hoover map our orbits, we tested this and via Metris and ZF scanner. Use uh, as a decompensation of kinematic point clouds as they try to get the drifts outside from kinematic scans and they like to be in crosslink between static and pseudo static scans. So uh, I think that's a very interesting idea what the scanner people bring to the market. And we already had beta version, we tested this, we find this for some projects some useful, but we are not so deep in testing that I can give you a full overview. But uh, definitely something where you should look for. I think it's very interesting for people that like to improve the quality of their kinematic scanning process. Uh, because you don't, you can work with total station points, but maybe you can only working with static points and uh, kinematic informations. Uh, um, yeah, it's super interesting. And we also do some tests actually on this uh, process. And finally, before I close the show, I have also static scans and kinematic scans. We have uh, some first testing from us about uh, uh, compare uh, Faro Orbis scans. I have to go one back here. Uh, Faro Orbis scans with Faro Core and this is the uh, as a university lab where we've been inside where there's a lot of measurement points is uh, University of Dresden, Applied University of Dresden. Uh, we are able to go in their, uh, uh, in their lab and then we, we see two colors. We have um, this orange one are the core blue one are Faro Orbis and we overlay this and I can show you some of the first quick results from and what we are doing. I think we have two videos here. Uh, one is now we're looking horizontal inside and um, you can follow this and you see it's a very good overlap between the both point clouds. Of course you see you have some more noise a little bit and sometimes you have some stray points from the Orbis that is you can expect this, but you see very detailed information. That's the pipe. So it's not so different. So here's some, all these smaller objects 
are pretty good here in this uh, in this video to see and uh, maybe I can move a little bit forward here to the end you see if you have some critical areas like complete like complex surfaces like shiny you have uh, effects but here on the other side even the thin project from this um, frame here are pretty good to see a very good result in the horizontal um, uh, area and now we move to this vertical data and that's the next one is the vertical slice and you see also here we have a super good overlay between both point clouds uh, it's not so different and uh, yeah it uh, looks that the orbis scanner deliver a really really accurate uh, point cloud as so this is uh, done with the scam without any additional control points inside is really this uh, slam uh, pro processing what we get out in the system and we overlapped it and you see it's uh, here on this bottom line it's pretty okay it's not super sharp because we make on a slower a slice not very it's a little bit bigger and and but if you look here up to the higher area like the structure we now we we see we move to this high point structure you see even on the roof the overlay looks pretty good here between the both data sets so also from the first uh, out view looks that if you have a very good slam area uh, these uh, orbis data deliver you a super good results where you can maybe do some tasks what you before do only with your terrestrial scanner so and for this i will uh, enter my show um, i uh, appreciate all uh, people they are following the show again and for this guys they are new don't forget uh, subscribe the channel leave a comment um, yeah and finally uh, like this video uh, that's helped this uh, channel to grow and i like to fight for the 3000 abonnements in my channel so maybe you give me a small instant gift and if you push the button so bye bye eric until the next news uh, from lizard game tv